Uh, welcome everybody to so You've Been Framed, and I'm um, very happy to be here, and thanks for, for everybody for coming. Um, Chemtrails and the New World Order is the, the title of the talk. I did a talk uh, some while ago in Bournemouth, and um, I found myself, uh, when I was compiling the talk, getting it together, that um, it's, it's hard not to talk about other subjects um, than chemtrails when you're discussing chemtrails, because I, I personally believe from my research that chemtrails are um, an important part of the depopulation agenda, uh, intrinsically linked, I feel. So um, if, if people who may not know me from the YouTube or These Changing Times radio, I run the Free Truth Show, been doing it about four years, and um, how I came on to con uh, chemtrails was um, I was on the internet one day, I'm used to looking at the clouds, I'm a landscaper, I'm used to sort of reveling in nature and taking long walks and I've always taken a great interest in nature, so it was astonishing to me that I didn't notice the chemtrails. Um, it had to be pointed out to me and I sat there for a week not realising what these streaks were and what they were talking about and um, eventually started my own new show on a, on a, um, a chat site and got invited to do TNS radio in Ireland and then these Changing Times radio. And I've continued non-stop for four years, really, without, um, I think I've t had one job in that time. And I've just been totally dedicated to exposing this and um, alerting people to the, to the problem. Um, just getting people to look up in the sky, that's my main agenda, that's my agenda. Um, so you can hear the show on Thursday nights and we interview people and um, try and get across um, the, the magnitude, the scale of this, this operation. Uh, we've got questions. What are they spraying? Uh, who is spraying the chemtrail? Uh, why is it being done? And how is it being done? I'm going to try to, um, we're going to try to find the answers to these questions today and explore some possibilities and uh, plenty of factual information as well. Start with the basics. Um, a lot of you will be familiar already with the basics, but just in case you're not, a creaky floor there. Uh, that's the chemtrail. This is the contrail, condensation trail. Normally lasts about 30 seconds if you see one, if you're lucky, depending on the humidity. Uh, hands length behind the aircraft, and it's condensation. It forms ice crystals and dissipates. That's normal. A chemtrail, on the other hand, will fan out and form a bank of cloud because it is full of heavy metals, um, aluminium oxides, barium salts, uh, radioactive strontium, and arsenic has been found. And uh, as you'll discover later, um, also bacteria, red blood cells, uh, molds, and fungus. So we're talking about weapons of mass destruction, biological weapons, aren't we, really, from the samples. As another example, uh, contrail, again, you can see that it's almost, this is from the same shot, it, it's, it's almost disappeared immediately. And here, you'll see it fan, fanning out, and it, it eventually whites out the sky. Uh, today, Portsmouth is absolutely plasma. The whole sky is full of chemtrail. Right over there, you can see even the, the, the waves of the harp machine that's running 24 hours. You can hear the harp machine, I'll come to that later, um, 24 hours. It runs on shortwave radio, it's the loudest thing on shortwave radio. So that's been running for some years now. But um, the sky over Portsmouth today is absolutely rammed with chemtrails, as it was on the Portsmouth Chemtrail Info Day that we did with Jane and Carl and Jane. And we, we handed out leaflets and we just try to get people to look up. So uh, I don't go out there anymore. It's as simple as that. I know what's in it. I don't go out on it. If it's a bad day and if it's raining, I run inside. <laughs> I know what's in this stuff. So it, it really is that simple. Um, just trying to convince people to stay healthy, really. That's, that's the main objective. This is uh, the Bournemouth Air Festival. Uh, this is actually 2011. The Royal Air Force, there we are. Lest we forget. Um, they had a... It was a big recruitment drive, actually. But... Um, I spoke to, this year, I spoke to some of the RAF chaps 
about, um, I had some questions for them. Um, very interesting replies. But here you can see Chemtrail. And it's actually, there's actually two there. And this one is fanned out. That's one they sprayed earlier. And another one here. And all this milky white, it begins to cover the sky. We want our blue skies back. That's why, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So the opportunity arose, whereas um, a flight lieutenant and a squadron leader and a warrant officer were having a chat, a jovial chat, and uh, I sauntered up with my recorder in my pocket just out of interest. I mean, haven't we all wanted to ask the RAF why they aren't dealing with this problem? Uh, aren't we all suspecting that they're perhaps complicit in not dealing, uh, at the very least, grossly negligent? And the, the conversation went something like this. Um, and there was chemtrails above our heads as we were talking, very much like that. Same kind of setup. Uh, here you can see the, the Spitfire, the Lancaster, the Hurricane in, in, in the, the proud days of the RAF in the Battle of Britain, um, defending our skies from tyranny. And today, defending our skies from ty uh, tyranny. When I asked about the chemtrails, I said, do you know anything about the chemtrails, the geoengineering? I actually said the aerial spraying. Uh, one explained that nowadays he was in the careers advice world. I said, oh, really? I said, I could do with a bit of advice, actually. I said, I'm a bit confused by this aerial spraying that's been going on today. Can you comment on that? A squadron leader. I'm not familiar with aerial spraying. It's not something I have any knowledge of at all. And the other one actually really took the mickey. He, uh, he, he seemed to enjoy the whole, the whole operation that's going on. He said, he said the positive thing, he said, I'll tell you what, is that's quite an attractive shape in the sky, actually. Uh, that's quite an attractive feature in the sky, actually. See what I mean? He said, look at that. I mean, you could go on forever with those sort of shapes, you know. So um, that got my back up. And I said, well, uh, another one said, yeah, it's probably, what, yeah, it's probably just as unhealthy as some of the burgers I've had around here. So that's the support you can expect um, with your taxpayers' money. And uh, I wasn't letting me away with that. I said, uh, well, I'd like to know why the RAF are allowing terrorists to spray our skies, you know, real ones, uh, not protecting us at all. The RAF is supposed to be protecting this country. Uh, and the reply from the RAF was, uh, I would say these are made by commercial airlines, uh, intimating it was a, a contrail, you know. And I replied, I don't understand why the RAF hasn't noticed, why they allow foreign air forces to spray us with biological agents, bacteria and fungus have been found. And he says, so what are you after from us? You, you have lots of leading questions. You, you're asking questions that you seem to already know the answer to. I said, what, what do I want from you? I said, at some point we would like somebody in the RAF to arrest the top men. Actually, because he's not, they're not helping. These people know to, uh, need to go to jail, I said. They're not protecting us. We need your help. Understand how serious this is. And they fobbed me off, uh, made a bit more of a laugh about it. And that was the end of the conversation, really. So that's, that's the... I mean, it's to be expected. I didn't expect uh, a positive response, like, oh, yeah, this is terrible. Um, I'll get on to my top man right away. They did refer me to the Ministry of Defence, the Public Relations Department, which is a, a cute name for propaganda, as we all know. So um, I didn't even bother contact them. What's the point? Same as if when you contact your MP, they have a standard response. Uh, I'll come to that later. I'll give you an example. So um, to cut a long story short, we're on our own. The government are not going to admit to it and stop it. The RAF are not going to protect you. Uh, all we can hope for is to get the, the message out to as many people as possible so they can at least uh, make a, a, an informed choice about staying healthy. <clears throat> and perhaps a momentum will build um, that will uh, stop it somehow. Uh, at least people can stay healthy in the meantime. Uh, what kind of...
what kind of aircraft are spraying? Well, <laughs> I've chosen um, a kit here because it's more detailed. This is the, the KC-135 Boeing Strato tanker. And it's not coming out of the engines because aluminium oxide is, is very corrosive and you'd have to change the engines very regularly. They're very expensive. Um, they usually fit nozzles on the wing tips and the leading edges, so they're converted. Another one is a McDonnell Douglas. That's, a, that's two of the main chemtrail planes that are flying. And here is a good example of the, the whiteout. We've got two chemtrails that are sprayed. You can see the heavy metals rising off it, coming down. Uh, that's not condensation and ice crystals. They would normally disperse, and then it wipes out the whole sky. Uh, looks like there's one there, too, I think. And it ends up like this. So that's the blue sky gone. Nice sunny day. Go for a walk. Start spraying. Your heart sinks because you know it's going to end up like that. <clears throat> that enough. This is uh, Germany. During the, um, the Iceland volcano, where all the aircraft were grounded across Europe. I was in Spain at the time, and all the French trains were on strike as well, so I couldn't get home. So typical French, really. Um, they're always on strike. Well, good luck to them. Somebody needs to do something. This is while the volcano was allegedly blocking out the skies. Um, and this is another day with chemtrails. So... You can see the difference there. That's another example of a close-up. And these kind of coloured rainbow effects you get, sometimes you see chem bows, they're called now. Chem bows. Um, it's usually ethylene diabromide, which is highly carcinogenic. And you'll see these chem bows. Uh, we've seen a chem bow, an upside-down chem bow, like an upside-down rainbow in Ibiza after heavy spraying above the beach. Uh, people often ask me, is it, is it major populations, the uh, major population centers that they concentrate on? Or, you know, is it everywhere? It's everywhere now. I don't think they're concentrating on any particular areas. It's everywhere. Every country. This is a global operation. Um, that's above the clouds. You can see what it should be like and what's happening above. <clears throat> Actually, looks like that's going to crash. You know. And here, once the spray is up and running, uh, you see this uh, ribbed effect, and that's typical of harp. That's a kind of harp signature, where the harp um, arrays in Alaska, and there's one in Carmarthenshire in Wales, actually. I'll show you that later. Uh, this characteristic ribbing is caused by the electromagnetic pulses that are pumped into the ionosphere and reflected back down. But the UN urges caution over geoengineering tests. I'm going to skip back because the last yeah, the last few pictures I've shown you is what you can expect from Wikipedia when you search term contrails Um, that's a contrail apparently so if you're concerned oh that's Cirrus aviaticus we've given it a name so if you're concerned about chemtrails and you go and look there's a lot of disinformation and um, I'm not sure Wikipedia is a, a wholly trustworthy site and also that's um, an example of uh, contrail as well apparently according to Wikipedia Wikipedia says contrails or vapour trails uh, see if you can notice anything strange here. Contrails or vapor trails are artificial clouds that are visible trails of condensed water vapor made by the exhaust of, uh, of aircraft engines. As the hot exhaust gases cool in the surrounding air, they may precipitate a cloud of microscopic water droplets, or if the air is cold enough, tiny ice crystals. Sounds right. Depending on atmospheric conditions, contrails may be visible for only a few seconds or minutes or may persist for many hours, which may affect climate. Wrong. But uh, 
the UN has urged caution. There's a strange kind of dichotomy going on where it's actually happening around the planet, and it's very obvious, yet the UN is having moratoriums on, and, and regulation of geoengineering and discussions, and we mustn't do this until we're absolutely sure it's not harmful to the environment and the people. And Yeah, yeah. Uh, guidelines on the... This is from the 18th of October. Uh, guidelines on the deployment of geoengineering uh, have been agreed by the UN, the, uh, the one, biodiversity summit in Hyderabad following intense negotiations. Uh, countries agreed on a text that specified what geoengineering means, outlines when it should be used, acknowledges its potential impacts on biodiversity and the potential cross-border consequences of its use. Uh, the document stresses the priority of addressing climate change through mitigation measures, such as increasing natural carbon sinks, and calls on all experiments to take into account international laws and conventions, uh, including the UN's Climate Change Convention. Uh, it also reaffirms the decisions taken at COP10, that's Copenhagen 10 summit in Nagoya, that's called for a scientific evidence for the need of geoengineering before any experiments take place. Right. So there's a strange dichotomy. They're not going to admit genocide. They'd have to go to jail. Or the masses would hang them from the lampposts or something. You know, they can't admit that they're doing it. But um, they're steadily, slowly but surely, getting the public used to the idea. Because most of them haven't even noticed yet. There's another example. And there are hundreds of thousands of people posting pictures on the internet from all around the world now. This is um, Eaton County, Michigan, 1999. It's been going on about 20 years. USA, California, California, 2010. So how are foreign air forces allowed to fly into another country's airspace and spray toxic chemicals? Uh, usually they're unmarked as well, without any uh, registration numbers, which is against the law, uh, against civil aviation and military law. How is it done? Well, there's a thing called the Open Skies Treaty. The OSCE, the Open Skies Consultative Committee, is supported by the Forum for Security uh, Cooperation Support Unit in the OSCE Secretariat. Sounds very Soviet, doesn't it? The central focus of the committee is to discuss all questions relating to compliance with the treaty's um, provisions. And it's ratified by 20 countries. And um, the treaty which is designed to promote openness and transparency in military activities, established a regime of observation flights over the territory of its signatories. Signatories are allowed to conduct observation flights using unarmed, fixed-winged aircraft to gather information about military forces and activities of other states' parties, from Vancouver to Vladivostok. The treaty also envisages the possible extension of the open skies regime to additional areas such as crisis management and protection of the environment. The, uh, the open skies treaties 35 state parties actually from Belarus to the United States all listed, There's probably more now. Um, the real intent of the Open Skies Treaty was simply to deal with the threat from out there, the environment, you see. But it's also to do with controlling people, crisis management. This is a quote from Alan Watt from CuttingThroughTheMatrix.com. Crisis management. Remember, this is a United Nations effort, and the World Health Organization, that's part of the United Nations, already years ago talked about lacing certain water supplies with tranquilizers to calm people who might just get a bit nasty, uh, rather nasty, if their country was being taken over. Hillary Clinton, CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, 
The United States believes that it is an essential for the Open Skies Treaty to remain a vital instrument in our Euro-Atlantic conventional arms control toolbox. That sounds like the sort of thing Hillary Clinton would say. So that's the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Uh, that was a conference. That was a conference in 2010, in June 2010. There's a civilian Open Skies Treaty and there's a military one. So that's how foreign air forces are allowed to spray you. Canada sprays America, America sprays uh, Canada, and uh, I don't know who sprays England. A lot of them are private corporations and um, we think NATO jets. And there's another example, um, but it's still under discussion, you see. That's uh, England, I believe. It's still under discussion. The sky is often like that. How many people, who, um, obviously, how many people haven't heard of chemtrails before they come here today or, or don't know much about it? Yeah, well, that, that's encouraging. That is encouraging that most people are familiar with it. There are various patents. This is the Hughes aircraft patent. Uh, there are hundreds of patents for geoengineering, stroke aerial spraying, stroke death dumps. Uh, this one in particular is the Hughes Aircraft Company, 1990. Um, stratospheric wells back seeding for reduction of global warming. Uh, this invention relates to a method for the reduction of global warming resulting from the greenhouse effect, and in particular to a method which involves the seeding of the Earth's stratosphere with wells back like materials. Most current approaches to reduce global warming are to restrict the release of various greenhouse gases such as CO2, CFC, and methane. Now, there's certainly a lot of hot air over this subject. Uh, these imply the need to establish new regulations and the need to monitor various gases and to enforce the regulations. One technique proposed to seed the metallic particles was to add the tiny particles to the fuel of jet liners so that the particles would be emitted from the jet engine exhaust while the airliner was at its cruising altitude. Uh, while this method would increase the reflection of visible light uh, incident from space, the metallic particles would trap the long wavelength black body radiation released from the Earth. Uh, this could result in net increase in global warming. Well, I've noticed on some, um, some days when it's particularly heavy, it heats up underneath all the chemtrail. It becomes um, unusually hot. Uh, such materials can include the class of materials known as wells back materials. The oxides of metal, uh, aluminium oxide, are also suitable for the purpose. And they talk about the seeding of the stratosphere occurs within this layer. The particles suspended in the, in the stratosphere. Uh, it is presently believed that particle sizes in the 10 to 100 micron range would be suitable for the seeding purposes. So even wearing a mask is not going to protect you. Larger particles would tend to settle to the earth more quickly. In this report, um, so there are hundreds of patents you can see. Um, in this report from the National Academy of Sciences, the policy implications of greenhouse warming, mitigation, adaptation and the science base. Uh, it states that the project was funded by the government, the US Environmental Protection Agency, and got other funding from a consortium of private foundations. The foundations and the charities and the international bankers run the world, folks, as I'm sure you know. But here we are, including the Carnegie Corporation of New York, the Charles E. Culpepper Foundation, the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and guess who? Bill Gates. The Rockefeller Foundation. <laughs> but yes, Bill Gates, yeah. And the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. This project had a massive amount of people involved, and the United Nations man, Maurice Strong, was there at the conception phase, as stated. Um, on page 59 of the Hughes patented way, 
uh, to use aircraft to maintain a cloud of dust in the low stratosphere to reflect sunlight. Geoengineering options, page 59, appear technically feasible in terms of cooling effects and costs on the basis of currently available preliminary information. They, on page 460, they expressed their delight at such low costs. Uh, the geoengineer David Keith said, it's a bit like riding on the backs of our grandchildren, but it's very cheap, about $50 a ton. Um, perhaps one of the surprises of this analysis is the relatively low costs at uh, which some geoengineering options might be implemented. And then it talks about um, the cost and um, how long and tonnage. But um, one, so they claim that they may do it in the future. The level of deception is is multi -levular. They claim they may geoengineer the planet in the future. Uh, but it's under discussion. We may have to do this to stop global warming. So you, you've got about three different layers of deception there. Global warming is a con. It doesn't exist. So when they eventually do come out and say, yeah, we've been spraying you for 20 years, what are you, what are, what are you going to do about it? It's for the planet. By that time, they hope that everyone will be sufficiently brainwashed enough to, to jump off a cliff to save the planet anyway. So there's lots of reports. It's, I mean, there's the uh, the government report, the UK government report, the the regulation of geoengineering, the House of Commons report, stacks and stacks of reports from these think tanks and scientists, geoengineers. Uh, Dennis Kucinich has the, the Space Preservation Act. And it's a bill to preserve the cooperation, uh, peaceful uses of space for the benefit of all humankind by permanently prohibiting the basing of weapons in space by the United States and to require the president to take action to adopt and implement a world treaty banning space-based weapons. Uh, the Space Preservation Act of 2001, well, it's still an act, not law. The term space means all space extending up, etc. And then... In, the, in this actual report, it does say chemtrails. They listed as chemtrails, which was then later removed from the report. Uh, my notes have gone a bit wobbly here for some reason. Excuse me. So I've said that I believe this is depopulation. There's nothing to do with global warming. It's all a big con anyway. And in the first global revolution, um, a report by the Council of the Club of Rome, a premier think tank set up by the Rockefellers, on page 75 of their 1990 publication, <clears throat> we're all being trained to, um, to, to, to value life less. That's what I've noticed through the media, through everything that we're exposed to. We're being, trained, uh, we're being trained to value life less, that we're the problem. Then you get your carbon taxes and, I don't know, they can spray the skies or use harp or something. On Club of Rome says, 1990, it would seem that humans need a common motivation, namely a common adversary, to organise and act together in the vacuum. Such a motivation must be found to... Uh, to bring the divided nations together to face an outside enemy, either a real one or else one invented for the purpose. Sounds a bit like Al Qaeda, doesn't it? But in, in the Club of Rome goes on to say, in searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea, we came up with the idea that pollution, uh, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine and the like would fit the bill. That'd fit the bill. All these dangers are caused by human intervention, not the corporations. And it is only through changed attitudes and behaviour that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. Now do you feel special? So all these old men sitting around in, um, in their think tanks, 
uh, deciding your future and coming up with uh, anything they can, really, just to, to do what they want to do to the planet and the people. The uh, Space Preservation Act talked about Dennis Kucinich's act in America. Space Preservation Act, detonating one or more explosives in close proximity to the object, directing a source of energy, uh, subatomic particle beams, electromagnetic radiation, plasma, or extremely low frequency, ELF or ultra low frequency ULF energy radiation against that object. Uh, this is um, to guard against doing this. This act is to guard against doing all this. But it's all being done through the use of land-based, sea-based, or space-based weapons using radiation, electromagnetic, psychotronic, sonic, laser, or other energies directed at individual purpose, uh, persons or targeted per populations for the purpose of information, war, mood management, or mind control of such persons or populations. So this presumes that all this exists. Uh, by expelling chemical or biological agents in the vicinity of a person. I'd like to get John's view on that, actually, uh, in the vicinity of a person. Does it allow all this because we're not actually person? Uh, talk to you about that later. Uh, such terms include exotic weapons such as um, electro, electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons. And here, and it's subsequently been removed, chemtrails. That's it. Just, there it is, chemtrails. And then it goes on about high altitude, ultra low frequency weapons, plasma, ultrasonic weapons, laser weapons, uh, extraterrestrial weapons, chemical, biological, environmental, climate or tectonic weapons. So there we have it. And that, that, that last, so that's gone now. Chemtrails is gone. Obviously, um, that's a term they hate using and that's, it's a term I love using. Now, you can call it aerial spray, you can call it chemtrails, you can prefer to call it geoengineering, you can call it death dumps. Whatever you want to call it, we're being poisoned from the skies. And uh, they don't, the, the, the geoengineers hate the term chemtrails, won't speak to you, and uh, it makes them cringe, so I like using that term and I'll continue to use it. Um, the key thing here, the tectonic weapons reference, that's very odd. That indicates um, they may be able to move the tectonic plates or somehow influence them. Uh, Secretary of Defence William Cohen on the left here, and here's our good friend. Well, our, our friend. Um, uh, well, it's Portillo. Him of that BBC program about a year before Seven Seven, wasn't it? Sitting on the yeah. Yeah, there's our good friend, Mr. Portillo. Uh, Secretary of Defense William Cohen, this is the US former Secretary of State, uh, Defense, sorry, and others are designing some, called, uh, some sort of engineering, some sort of insects that can destroy specific crops. Others are engaging in an eco type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. So there are plenty of ingenious minds out there that are at work finding ways in which they can wreak terror upon other nations. It's real, he says. Is he talking about themselves? And the deception goes on and on and on, and it's what I call the chemtrainment. Chemtrainment. It's from the Mail Online. The transatlantic jet trails visible from space, how contrails can stay in the air for up to 14 hours. Doesn't it say that in the Wikipedia? Here they are. These are contrails. This is from, this is a satellite view. And this was in the Daily Mail, a big, big picture in the Daily Mail. That's a big spray day, I can tell you. From my experience of looking at the sky, I've seen them, you can see, the, you can see that from the ground, it's like that. Grids across the sky. Tic-tac-toe. 
And here we have Cir Cirrus Cloud, which I think is still a chemtrail, Newfoundland, and aged spreading contrails. And the list goes on. There are thousands of articles every day. Um, oddities in the sky. And if you send in your picture to the newspaper, they, they, they normally print it if it's, if it's like this. So I'm not used to holding a microphone, so I'd normally be able to fly through my papers. Uh, this, I think it was a Guardian. Uh, NATO pilots to use Peterborough airspace for training. Uh, this aircraft is used as an airborne warning and control aircraft. Tuesday, 12.10, a plane usually based in Belgium that is used by NATO for international surveillance of airspace, the open skies, caught people's attention as it circled around Peterborough for hours on Monday. It was spraying. The sight of the plane yesterday morning caused a stir. They get people phoning in all the time. Let's ignore it. Ah, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's practice. With concerned residents contacting the Ministry of Defence, I call it the Ministry of Death, who explained it was a NATO Boeing E3 Sentry. The surveillance plane had been sent by the multinational peacekeeping organisation on a standard trip around the United Kingdom. Blah, blah, blah. And in the Worcestershire News, same thing happened. They even made an article about it. Reasons for planes' flight, still a mystery. Is there something we should know? They talk to us like children. You know? And anyone who's uh, self-educated, like many of us here, I presume, I'm sure, phone up with facts, figures, documents, pictures, photograph, evidence, Contrails, contrails, contrails. Goodbye. There's no evidence. <laughs> it won't even meet you. It's just, it's just we're on our own. So um, it's frustrating. That's another picture of the Peterborough aircraft, I think that was. I must fly on because a bit shorter time, a bit less time than I thought I'd need. Here we are. This is more chem trainment, getting used to the idea of geoengineering. The next gen... The next generation, 20 years from now, it's all going to be normal. In fact, if you talk to somebody who's, who's 17 or 18, 20 now, it's all perfectly normal. People who are 25, it's normal. Yeah, well, it's, what's, what are you talking about? It's, it, it, chemtrails, here's a leaflet, sir. Would you like to, can I leave that with you? Oh, well, it was, it's normal. You know, this is our last generation able to, to make a difference and, and, and break through the, the lies and deception. Otherwise, it's, it's over. Geoengineering, from The Guardian, the radical idea is to combat global warming. There's two lies in one headline, it's brilliant, isn't it? Artificial clouds and creating uh, colossal blooms of oceanic algae are among the ideas scientists say must now be considered. It's all consideration, you see, from The Guardian, 2008. Artificial clouds to reflect away sunlight, creating colossal blooms of oceanic algae, etc. The idea of geoengineering on a planetary scale in a bid to control climate has been around for more than 50 years, but to date has remained on the, on the fringes. <laughs> you know. So uh, there's, there's another example of the media deceiving the public. And uh, that was the Worcester area from an independent photograph. Interesting technique there. But we're, sometimes you will have success with local media. Uh, ben Dodds, in the largest local newspaper in England, the Kent Messenger, uh, he managed to get this article. There's three articles in there, actually. Uh, climate Change Department denies conducting any experiments and do our clouds have a sinister lining uh, campaigner fears secret experiments are taking place above our heads oh really so thank you to ben dodds i think it was the kent freedom movement i've had success i went on a christian local radio station in in uh, bournemouth uh, Twenty thousand people heard 
and they, they invited me back to do an interview, a pre-recorded interview, which I was a bit nervous of, because you never know when you're going to get hit, a hit piece or whatever. But they were very respectful, and they ran it um, about four times each month for about three months. So you can, it is worth contacting your local media. It's not worth contacting uh, the major press and the, the BBC. Good luck with that. Probably get a hotline to Savile or something. <laughs> but no, they're not going to help you. Here's the House of Commons report. Uh, they get up and discuss it. It's all very normal. It's all very sort of communist set up, really. The House of Commons Science and Technology Committee, the regulation of geoengineering. This is an article from Steve Watson, Infowars.com. A recently published lengthy UK report suggests appointing a global suggests appointing a global body such as the UN to exclusively regulate worldwide geoengineering of the planet in order to stave off man-made global warming. The House of Commons report entitled The Regulation of Geoengineering was compiled by the Government Science and Technology Committee in collaboration with the US House of Representatives Science and Technology Committee. It demonstrates how seriously both governments are looking at the idea of manipulating the planet's climate. What would you call that? Brian, can I ask you a question? What would you call that double speak? They're spraying the skies and still saying that they're going, just thinking about it. What would you call, was that, is that double think? Lying, right. <laughs> They're lying to us. My God. I thought that the BBC and these various press statutes were um, independent. Well, they never were. Uh, we may need geoengineering as a plan B in the event of the failure of plan A, the reduction of greenhouse gases. No, we need more CO2. It's not our enemy. We are faced with highly disruptive climate change, the report states. If we start work now, it will provide the opportunity to explore fully the technological, environmental, political and regulatory issues. It continues. The report also notes that the idea of geoengineering should be made more mainstream and further integrated into the government's climate change policies. We recommend that the government give greater priority to public engagement on geoengineering by, for example, showing how it relates to its policy on the reduction of carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, how, about, how about this for um, prioritising public engagement? How about, why don't you ask us if you can spray us like bugs, whether we'd like that or not? We don't matter. It's depopulation. I hope to convince you of that. It describes this geoengineering report. It I mean, this is the House of Commons, right from the horse's mouth. They're talking about it. Donkeys, yeah. It describes several methods, proposed methods of geoengineering, including spraying sulfate aerosols into the stratosphere to mimic the cooling effect produced by volcanic eruptions, as well as placing mirrors in space to reflect the sun's rays away from the Earth, a technique known as solar radiation management. Yeah, we're gods. We can manage the planet. We can, we can change it. We don't have to tell the public. They can just die like bugs. And that's their attitude. The report notes that such methods, such methods could substantially influence the climate within months, but may generate serious unintended consequences. And it goes on. And the Royal Society is involved in this House of Commons report a very Freemasonic society, very old. The Royal Society has even more vehement than national governments in its advocacy of the man-made cause of global warming, calling for such drastic CO2 cuts to be made in the short term, not even by the usual target date of 2050. They have a target date of 2050. That's to reduce the world's population by 80% by 2050, according to the United Nations, on record. That's their target, 2050 date. So we're fighting for our lives, really. And all we have, all we have at the moment is this, this, and this. 
for now. Uh, who's um, president of the Royal Society? This is Mr. Paul Nurse, which I think is a great name for somebody. He's, he's a nurse. Sir Paul, N Knight of the Realm, Nursey, is, is the head of the... I mean, these people are still front men. There's, there's two or three levels of above professor in the sciences. These are still muppets playing the game like the politicians do giving you the idea that uh, your vote counts. You know, it's their job to take the flack, and it's their job to take the flack as well. So we're, we'll certainly um, enjoy giving it to them. One notable member of the Royal Society also is James Lovelock, an eco-fascist who advocates ending democracy and instituting an authoritative elite to oversee global climate management. He's also patron of the Optimum Population Institute, there are hundreds of them, a notorious UK-based public policy group that campaigns for a gradual decline in the global human population to what it sees as a sustainable level. Sure. Lovelock is also an ardent advocate of geoengineering the planet in the name of controlling the um, climate. He proposed laying vast swathes of pipe under the world's ocean in order to pump water from the bottom of the sea uh, to the top, uh, the, the idea, uh, it just goes on, it's just mad cap ideas. Um, the SPICE project, I'll come to that as well. Our report covering the regulation of geoengineering will now dovetail into a wider inquiry that the House of Representatives Committee is carrying out on geoengineering. As we, as we covered in a previous in-depth report, this is from Steve Watson, numerous universities and government agencies have been conducting studies in the field of geoengineering for years, including active deployment in the form of chemtrail spraying. Another prominent supporter of geoengineering proposals is none other than the White House science star John P. Holdren, a key Obama advisor who infamously co-authored a book in which he called for a planetary regime planetary regime <coughs> to this guy is Obama's key science advisor looks about like Jerry Oliver's doesn't it he's key advisor to Obama and he wants to enforce 1977 enforce draconian population control measures such as forced abortion infanticide and mandatory sterilization. There's your man. In April last year, Holdren revealed that high-level talks had already taken place to explore the possibility of geoengineering the environment, blah, 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 by shooting pollution particles into the upper atmosphere to reflect the sun's rays. It's got to be looked at, Holdren was quoted as saying. We don't have the luxury of taking any approach off the table. The AP, Associated Press, Rothschild owned, also reported that Holdren said he had raised the concept in administration discussions. Love to have been in the Oval Office when, the, when that was discussed. Hey, Obama, I got a great idea. But it's been going on for 20 years, so, you know. Such intense interest in exploring geoengineering and implementing an overarching global authority on the matters mirrors publications penned by the ultra-elite Council on Foreign Relations. So there we are. Um, there's also a title document, Geoengineering Workshop on Unilateral Planetary Scale Geoengineering. The CFR proposes different methods of reflecting sun back into space. Something tells me there's a lot of money in this. Betting on the weather, eh? Yeah. So it goes on. I'm going to skip skip some bits to save a bit of time. So we have this population population matters uh, group, this um, whole gaggle of foundations and sort of think tanks discussing how um, to reduce the population. Ah, family planning. Uh, I don't know, sterilizing uh, sterilants in the water in the water supply that you drink, uh, <laughs> chemtrailing. You know, why not? 
population matters. It's the population, there's another name for it, but it's mainly population matters. So let's have a look at some of the patrons of the Population Matters group, uh, a eugenics think tank that uh, lobbies government to reduce population and, and find ways of doing it. Let's have a look at some of the patrons. Oh, that's the book, that uh, Eco Science, that John P. Holden wrote. It's about 500 pounds if you want a copy. This is Population Matters for a Sustainable Future. Everything sustainable this and sustainable that. Reduced population growth would help to conserve threatened species. This is not one of the patrons, by the way, but you could be mistaken. Uh, join us in asking that governments make addressing population part of their sustainability strategy. What does that even mean, sustainability strategy? There's your patron of the Optimum Population Trust. The grand figure of the environment we've all grown up with and trusted. The, the father figure, very important, off his chair. I thought I'd include some nice sort of predatory symbolism there as well. David Attenborough. So while he's, all this time, he's been, he must be a psychopath, is he? Yes, you don't get to that level without being on board with the whole agenda. It's the way it goes. Probably a high Freemason, who knows. But I met this guy once when I was about 20. I met him in Waterstone's bookshop. I said, sir, the work you do is marvellous. Thank you. I really admire. And he was an absolute gent. But then you can afford to be if you're a rich psychopath, can't you? How, how many times have you met somebody who, 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 who's turned out to be a complete psychopath was, was known as a really nice guy? They're educated, refined, psychopathic. That's how you get there. They notice your traits in, in school and they shove you into grammar school or you're born for the purpose. Probably one of Darwin's, a spawn of Darwin or something. Or Bertie Russell's loinage. Sorry, lineage. All environmentals... Ah, oh, look at the polar bears. They can't swim now. Millions of years of evolution, apparently, and, then, and now they can't swim. And, they, and their population decreasing. Yeah, right. All environmental problems become harder and ultimately impossible to solve with ever more people. Jane Goodall, another patron. Her of chimpanzee fame. And, and she's a UN messenger of peace. Interesting symbolism there, sun symbolism. It's a black sun, too. Mm -mm. That's another talk, isn't it? I wonder what, I wonder what Kofi Annan is saying there. Yeah. What are you going to do? With, you know what we're going to do with these monkeys, don't you? I don't know. Exactly. Not Chris Packham. Chris! I love Chris, not Chris Packham. He don't want to kill me. Chris Packham says, control, of the, control the population to save wildlife. He's called on world leaders to limit population growth in order to stop the mass extinction of species. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? What about us? Chris Packham presents the new series of the BBC's Seasonal Nature Watch programme, Autumn Watch. This is from uh, the, the Telegraph. More than 190 countries will gather in Japan this week. This is from the 19th of October 2010. For the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity to discuss the best way to stop the loss of wildlife around the world. You are now less important than a hedgehog, for example. Or an eagle, for that matter. The human population, he said, this is incredible. Man needs a slap. The human, uh, the human population is sowing the seeds of a mass extinction event, he said. The fact is, there is not enough space. The excessive demand, uh, um, echoing the words of Sir David Attenborough, 
He called for governments around the world to start regulating the population. Is, is, is somebody familiar with law here? Can you, say, can you actually say these things? Well, I know we're in a free country and it's free speech, but this is verging on criminal. Incitement to genocide. In, I, I, I'd really like to know. I don't know my law very well, but I'd like to know. Because it's close. It's a brainwashing effect. If you're adding and contributing to the brainwashing of people and devaluing their lives and encouraging people to have suicides in school, in pool they have suicide lessons. A friend of mine, her daughter, her dad committed suicide. She's sitting in class, she's expected to have suicide lessons. In America, they take you to the morgue and poke the bodies and stuff for a field trip. We're being tri if you're contributing to this brainwashing and devaluing of life, and I, I personally, I think that's a crime, literally. Uh, Mr. Packham, who has one adopted child, that's a bit too much, isn't it? Insisted he was not an advocate of eugenics or forcing people not to have children. He's not an advocate of eugenics. This, is, this has got to be double thing. Mr. Packham, he said he had different policies could be developed. He even said the Catholic Church and other religious and social institutions could be involved. Regulating the population, he said, has to play a role. And it's just starting to get on the agenda. Well, it's been on the agenda for a long time. Uh, Mr. Packham, a zoology graduate, said it was about time the world started to appreciate the huge value of wildlife in, in not only providing cuddly, cuddly animals for people to look at, but essential services. We need to protect the whole landscapes and environments, not just the pandas. He said people should expect to start paying more for their food and through taxes to, pe to protect the, the services provided by wildlife. We have to accept... We need to pay more for our food, and if we want it to be harvested sustainably. It just goes on. He said, the world is overcrowded without species, and it's putting extraordinary pressure on other species. And can you imagine the green, you know, the kids at school who just love the environment, that, that, that they're being radicalised, just loving this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pay more for my food. I'll eat less. I'll throw myself off a cliff to save the planet. So it's all about saving the environment, and global warming is a big, um, big part of that, and uh, we might have to spray the skies in the future. It's under consideration, maybe, um, with chemtrails. Chem but here, from David Rose. Oh, I didn't know what paper it was. I think it was the mail. A global warming stopped 16 years ago reveals the meteorological report quietly released. And here is the chart to prove it. Uh, some cl some cli climate scientists, such as Professor Phil Jones, director of the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia, last week dismissed the significance of the plateau, saying that 15 or 16 years is too short a period from, from which to draw conclusions. Well... Phil Jones, you may remember, Climate Gate. He was embroiled in the Climate Gate scandal, where they, um, they, they, <laughs> all their emails were exposed that it was a fraud, that they were hiding the decline in temperature and the emails and the intimidation and the, the fraud that was going on was all exposed. So we know that global warming has been exposed numerous times, but it doesn't matter. It's a must be. So no matter, no matter how many times you try and expose it and, and go to the authorities and, and, and argue with them till you're blue in the face, it's a must be, even though it's been exposed, it, they will carry on with the global warming carbon credit agenda. It's a must be. And that's it. Uh, carbon credits for each individual person too. Uh, climate gate, we all know about that. So um, as we're a bit short of time, I'm going to skip that. I wanted to get on to the Dorset biological trials. I live in Bournemouth, in Dorset. Again, 
from the Observer. This is a declassified document. I've actually got the whole thing right here. This is a declassified document. The Dorset Biological Warfare Experiments in 1963 to 1975. And I just thought I'd show that because I thought that was brilliant. It's from the Dees illustration.com, David Dees, an inconvenient arrest. That's lovely. He, he's he presumably getting an Oscar for his performance there. Superb. Should have been December the 21st, 2012 or something, shouldn't it? So there we go. And that's quite funny as well. I thought I'd break it up with a bit of a laugh. The polar bears can't swim. What a con. It's a con man. One of the greatest con men on the planet. That's the, uh, that's the Spice Project, where they shoot up lots of air, water or aerosols into the sky uh, with a big pipe, with a big hose pipe. Lots of uh, madcap. You know, the, the typical image of madcap scientists, mad scientists, they're really out there and they've got all the money and all the best suits, you know. They're really there, and they're controlling our lives, micromanaging our lives now. There we go. I'm surprised they didn't roll out the Spice Girls at the Olympics or something. Total Illuminati ceremony. This is the ice whale. <clears throat> it was parked, moored, sorry, off Portland and sprayed Bacillus thuringiensis, E. coli, and anthrax-mimicking agents and various other things and then set up monitoring stations uh, around Portland and uh, the Dorset area to, uh, to see the effect on the people's health. Um, the effect was uh, lots of increases in cancer and miscarriages and birth defects. And this went on for years. They even had vans at some stage uh, um, in the middle of the country, up north somewhere, vans and villages just going around spraying people. This went on for a long time. I'd like to know who was the captain of the ice whale that day. I know it wasn't you, Brian. No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> and so it parked off Portland Bill, and they waited for the wind to be correct, and they sprayed us with anthrax-mimicking agents, E. coli, to see what the health effects were. And the reason they gave was... Well, the Soviets might invade. We've got, we got to know how to protect ourselves. You know, Soviets, the Soviets might spray us, so we'll spray you. Uh, that's the Ministry of Death. And who knows what the effects are. There's all the, um, the sampling sites, the positions of them, and they just set it up and see what the effect was on the public. So they've done it before. Surely our government wouldn't be complicit in spraying us with biological weapons. There's the declassified documents. They've done it before. They're doing it now, bigger than ever. And I, it's getting worse, actually. It's, it's accelerating this year. This year I've seen more than ever, virtually every day. If it's a nice sunny day and there's no chemtrails and the, and the sun is shining and there's blue and it's fluffy white clouds, I'd run outside and just run around in it and just breathe deeply. I can't believe it's happening. It's that rare, you know. I want my blue skies back. 2025, a big, uh, a big report from the United States Air Force owning the weather in 2025. Because of time, I encourage people to look that up. Owning the weather by 2025. Applying, same report, applying weather modification to military operations. Made it rain in Vietnam on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the cloud seeding. This is just the next step up. I don't know. Well, I know where it's going to end. It'll be destruction of the human species. And then the world will be tailored for just the elite. And we'll have a few uh, alphas and deltas running around doing the, the menial jobs. Uh, that's chemtrail. Spreading out. That's Portsmouth, Spinnaker Tower, I think I took that actually, 
Right. I might have been in a boat. Yeah. More chemtrail. So what do we find? What's found in these chemtrails? Morgellons is not a disease. It's the effect that the chemtrails have on you. There's fibres found in chemtrail fallout. These fibres are studied under the microscope. This is from carnicominstitute.org. Please go there. It's the most, um, it's the best at the studies and the independent analysis. Carnicom, Clifford Carnicom, absolutely rocks. And there's a treasure to humanity. These uh, Morgellons, you get the little fibres that somehow manage to work their way through your skin. It becomes very itchy. A report from one Morgellon sufferer. In the fall of 1998, I was out in my garden working. The weather was warm and exceptionally humid and sticky. At one point, I absolutely, absolutely mindedly scratched my neck and noticed that my fingernails came back absolutely clotted with white fibres. Out of curiosity, I scratched several other areas of my skin with my nails and discovered that when scratched, any exposed area of skin left my nails full of these clotted fibres. Whatever skin was covered with clothing did not have the fibres. The air must have been thick with these fibres for so many of them to be layered on me like that. About a month later, I started having unusual skin symptoms and not feeling well. I'm very suspicious that these airborne fibres had something to do with my developing Morgellons. So it's being studied. Um, I was stood outside my door the other day and I could see the chemtrail fallout. That's the first time I've actually seen the fallout coming down. It was that heavy. They must have got the, the, the mix wrong or something. So, um, the, the blisters are very common from um, Morgellon sufferers. These are the fibres that are found. This is the rainwater sample. Fibres found in the rainwater sample. This is from researcher Lisa Jones, has revealed contamination with pathogens that have strong similarities to the Morgellons pathogen. The thorns on the lattice appear to be designed to cause the organism to stick and catch on skin and clothing. It's, it's looking very likely that these fibres are designed in a lab some of them even look like nanotechnology pieces. That's um, a fibre blood perfect match slide. Clifford Carnicom's news research shows that the airborne chemtrails fibres and the fibres found in the tissue of a patient with advanced Morgellon disease are a spot on match. So what they find coming down and what's happening, what they find in the person's spot on match. Um, some of them do look very odd and kind of robotic under the microscope. I can't comment on that. It may be na nanotechnology, I can't say. But there's a, <laughs> a serpentine glyph on there, which I think is quite telling. Some of them even glow, they're fluorescent, you know. And again... That's the, the gel. This is gel. Some of it comes down in gel. Uh, I've had reports of it just landing on people's cars and they can't even power wash it off. Gel, that's going in our lungs. Affecting our respiratory problems are a big problem. Flu-like symptoms are a big problem. It makes, me, it makes me... I do these talks and I do enjoy meeting the people, but it makes me angry just even thinking and talking about it this much. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing. So these fibres are coming down, and this, with, uh, on the same day I stood on my doorstep about two weeks ago, and watched this chemtrail come down, I thought, that looks like the videos I've seen of the chemtrail coming down at night with the torch with people, you know. They do it at night, usually. On the same day in South Yorkshire, this was filmed in the morning. And I, this was, I was on my doorstep at 8 o'clock in the morning, and in South Yorkshire, this chem web. It's very common. You touch it and it disappears. They're not spiders. Not a lot of people say they're spiders. There must be a lot of spiders. Look. 
same day. Chemtrails. Uh, another thing to look at, I wish I had more time, but um, if you live near one of these, move. Um, electromagnetic, I'd call it psychotronic warfare and very bad symptoms. People are getting the same symptoms. If you live here in this flat, you live here in this flat, that flat, that apartment, you know, on, on, they were all getting the same symptoms. And when they fi finally started talking to each other, as neighbours used to do, um, they were all having the same symptoms. So move or think of something else. They're called tetramasts. Tetramasts, absolutely. Tetrawatch.org is an excellent website. Red blood cells have been found in these fibres. I mean, they're crossing pigs with uh, human, uh, putting human DNA in the bacon now, so... Uh, maybe they get a bit of kind of satanic fun out of turning us into cannibals and spraying us with uh, human parts as well. Red blood cells. What's that doing in there? This is Chester, Arkansas. Nice asterisk. That's very common. Lots of funny little shapes they make. This is BBC Media Deception. Someone sends in a nice picture from Iceland. Uh, there's no comment on it. It's just, oh, yeah, isn't that strange? That's, an, that's a phenomenon. It's a rare phenomenon. This is Tammy Souza from uh, Fox News in Chicago. They were having a heat wave in January. Um, they were having a heat wave in January in Chicago. And she explained that all this is uh, it's, it's quite normal. Uh, this, is, this is the sky over Chicago today. And uh, it's nothing really to worry about. It'll probably clear. But in reality, what they did... Uh, what a member of the public did was take a, a photo themselves and post it, make a YouTube video, actually. I took a frame from it. Uh, that was the same day. The 1st of the 5th, 2012. But it's nothing really to worry about. It'll probably clear. Enjoy the heat wave. This looks like a shapeshifter. I don't go there. Um... So Tammy Sousa, why isn't she telling you the truth or why is she telling you the half truth? And I did say it in um, my last talk, but I'd like to say it again because she's a banker owned whore. Owned by the banks. The media own the banks. Rothschild owns AP and Reuters. That's your world news that dishes it out to everybody else. Hanover, Germany. See there, it's beginning to spread out again. I'd say that one was being that one was being sprayed now. That was being sprayed at the same time. That was being sprayed about a minute ago. And that was about half an hour ago. And all this probably be about two hours or maybe an hour ago. Um, the harp sky. Uh, the harp array that I mentioned, where they send magnetic pulses into the atmosphere and heat up the ionosphere, sorry, and you get this kind of ribbing, almost like folded duvet effect, I call it. Ribbing, uh, herringbone kind of pattern. Uh, weather wars, I mean, what is going on? What kind of reality are we living in here? I thought I'd spend the rest of my life uh, inventing things to do because life was getting a bit boring. Getting a, I have to do some hobbies or something. Start a hobby, God. You know, go out more. Just, just, you know, travel or something. But life's getting a bit. Oh. That's the reality we're living in. Very strange. It must be resisted. It must be stopped. It must be fought. This is kind of feathering out. Of the chemtrail, that's just looking from my house. Sometimes they go literally right over your house. It's like, cheers. More chemtrail. Now, who's delivering this stuff? I've often wondered, who's delivering this stuff? You know, and what are they telling them? Who's delivering it to the aeroplanes? You know, what kind of mind control ninny does this job? And... It's, I can't say, maybe it's libel, I don't know, sue me, but 
Trimac and Rentacle have been, um, it's been indicated to me that they are heavily involved in it. And sometimes the truck drivers get $15,000 per trip just to bring the um, aerosols to the airports in America. Unusual track, uh, truck activity across the US, Trimac Western tanker trucks that do not display dot placard codes giving their contents. So when it's going along the road, you don't know what's in it. Being waved through mandatory truck inspection stops, people who slow down to take a look see are being shadowed 20 to 30 miles by civilian cars escorting the tanker trucks. Trimac is owned by Rento Kill. You gotta love that, haven't you? Rento Kill of the United Kingdom. They haul pesticides and chemicals for BASF, DuPont, and Bayer. A DuPont is a big Illuminati family. I recommend this book. I don't normally plug books, but if you want to know where it's all coming from and how it ha how it's got this way, Bloodlines of the Illuminati. Fritz Springmeier. I've interviewed him. He's an absolute gent. He did nine, uh, eight years in prison. It set him up as a bank robber. Said he was conspiring to rob banks. That is as close to the truth as you'll get as to who's doing what and how it's done. In fact, the example I'd like to give here is Findhorn. What he describes as the Vatican City of the New Age movement. And I, normally went, I almost went there I was about 20, thought angels was a great idea, everything was alive and the stones, yeah. Uh, one of the conduits through which the Illuminati send instructions from England to their witches in America has been through Findhorn, Scotland, the Vatican city of the New Age movement. Interesting. So that's the truck, the Trimac truck, that's delivering all the stuff. Well, what can we do? Picket the trucks? Find out where they're coming from? Picket them? Stand in the way? Stand in the way of the aeroplanes? I mean, what do we have to do? Do we have to protest? No, they'd shoot you dead. <laughs> they'd call you a terrorist or something, or eco-terrorist. So we just have to inform as many people as possible, peacefully, and they can stay healthy. That's my objective. Non-violent. It's incredible to say that, isn't it? It's, it's heartbreaking to have to say that I, I'm being sprayed by chemical, biological weapons and there's nothing I could do about it because I'm non-violent and I don't want to go to jail. They've declared war on humanity and we have to deal with our own individual ways of dealing with it. It's, it's, it's distressing. And I understand, and I know a lot of people, have, uh, I've heard that a lot, uh, quite a few people have come here today because they're frantic. They want to know more. They want to be among people that, and, and meet people. I hope I can meet you all and everyone meets each other. They, they, they've come here today because they're frantic about chemtrails. They, their friends think they're conspiracy nuts. Not our term. We didn't invent conspiracy theory. We didn't stick those two words together. It is a conspiracy. And... It's, it's great that uh, Jane and Carl and Jane have, have given us this opportunity to just talk to each other because we, it's a bit like Alcohol's Anonymous or something. We all sit around and go, yeah, I thought I was going mad as well. Yeah, great to meet you. You know, I've got five minutes. Well, I, I, was, I was told I was going to do two hours. So I'll, I'll do the two hours. That's what I set for. And um, I'll, I'll try and make it as quick as I can and probably be... Um, one and a half hours or something, because I've got rid of a lot of it. Uh, I will take questions. If I get through, I'll take the questions, absolutely. But you can all ask, ask me questions all day around. Um, I'll just stick to the talk for now. Um, there we are, there's another one. Suffolk County, you go, again, you're on our own. You go to your, this is Long Island. You go to your legislator, you explain and you tell them and you give them evidence and documents and piles of evidence and they just sit there and go, yeah, okay, thanks very much, we'll, we'll, um, we'll consider that, thank you, sir. And nothing, nothing. I don't blame them. It's great that they did it, I admire them, fair play. But it's, it's pointless now. It's a war on humanity. Exasperation, that's all you get. The typical standard response from your 
NP is the same, every country. This is Lake Geneva, the Rhone Valley, more chemtrail satellite, incredible amounts going on. Who's paying for this? You are. Guarantee it's taxpayers' money. And, but, you know, we live in austere times, so, you know, tighten up. It's your fault. You, you borrowed too much money. Meanwhile, the banks have sold all your gold. It's your fault. The hypocrisy is astounding. Again, from space, this is, um, here we are. We're roughly about here, I think. It's the French coast. More chemtrail there. I'm sorry that's not very clear. Oh, that's better. And they, from, from Portsmouth and Bournemouth, they normally fly north to south. Has anyone noticed that in Portsmouth? North to south, mainly, but on heavy spray days, they're every direction. But it's mainly north to south. A little fade there. Again, there's your grid system, tic-tac-toe, and then a big whiteout. For some reason, they, they change their patterns, you know. Different mixes. The mix is now changing. It's becoming more yellow, more kind of globular. In Canada, for example, the mix is changing. And they have a winter and summer mix, apparently, that Alan Watts has noticed. Because sometimes it comes down... And I think these chemwebs are a result of them getting it wrong. The polymers they spray also, they, um, the, the metal particulates add to that. They, they kind of cling to it. The bacteria, they're like... It's like a... It's like they're hitching a ride. Sometimes they get the mix wrong and you get these chem, chem webs. Whole trees are just covered in it sometimes when they first started spraying. But it's more finely tuned now. This is um, Korea, who's the president of Ecuador, who said, um, if the chemtrail planes continue to spray over my country, I will shoot them down. It hasn't done yet. I haven't heard of that. Wouldn't that be war? He doesn't want to start a war, does he? No, but they're spraying anyway. Mm. Is he Council on Foreign Relations? Don't know. This is um, some guy who apparently is still under house arrest. This is Nikolai Aleksic from Serbia. Um, he spoke out and encouraged his military to, to help stop this, to, to stop the GMOs being ex in, imported into his country. Um, and to stop the chemtrail spraying, and uh, they took away his flat, and uh, now he's under house arrest or something in his flat, and doesn't own it or something. And no one has heard anything for months, actually. Nothing. Serbia. Nikolai Alexic. More chemtrail? On and on and on. There are thousands of these on the internet, I'm sure you've seen. That's 1998 been going on since about 1998, I think 1996, and a few test trials before that. 1998, that one. Castle Point in Dorset, 2011. It's a bit like War of the Worlds, actually. Oh, that's Asda, yeah. This is uh, pre-9-11, obviously. On oh, 9-11, there was no... None of these trails after, I think it's four or five days, or was it up to 15 days? None. And the media deception, you love this, goes on and on and on. And they can't say. If you went to um, Simon Parkin from Meridian Tonight, I'd love to speak to this man. I still, I haven't done it yet. I, I meant to. He, on his uh, Meridian Tonight blog, he's got... Uh, clouds that look like other things. Cloud, there we are. Reading tonight. Clouds that look like other things. It's been a while, but we've had some brilliant ones sent in recently. And we've even had our first celebrity, too. Uh, as this morning's Philip Schofield, he was in the scene from War of the Worlds. He thought he was in the scene from the War of the Worlds when a flying saucer appeared in the sky. Notice they're not saying... Something suspicious about this. I don't think that's natural. Oh, and um, uh, they're not necessarily the ones Glory Murray spotted over Stokes Bay, and birds are always leaving. Birds. Uh, that's a feather. Feather. 
Yeah, in Raynham, St. Leonard's on Sea. And, and a flying fish, or is it a whale? It's a whale, apparently, yeah. Oh, quite normal, you know. It's a very strange sky today, isn't it? I must check the weather. Oh, that's normal, right. Oh. Yeah, apparently, this is the Olympic torch. <laughs> So UFOs and the Olympics, I was like, oh, are they, are they, oh, <laughs> is it going to be a fake alien invasion? Are they trying to tell us something here? No, I don't think so. Here's Harp in Alaska, the electromagnetic pulses I mentioned in Kokona, Alaska. This is Brader Murphy. I'll get to the um, harp in a minute. That's where I was going to take a break. Um, but I'm going to rush through. This is Brayden Murphy. She's, she must be knocking on 70 now. When I met her at the No World Order rally that I organised in, in Phoenix Park in Dublin, she came along. She could hardly walk. She's, uh, she, she said she almost died after a heavy spraying one day and all her friends became ill. Her face was swollen. She said she nearly, she felt like she was going to die. And many of her friends were also very sick. She had enough. She went from Kildare to Dublin. She chained herself to the Irish Parliament. And the police had to cut her free. Luckily, they didn't beat the hell out of her. But that is an extraordinary woman, an example to us all. And I always do it. I'd like to give her a round of applause, if you please. They don't make them like they used to. Thank you, Brady Murphy. Oh dear, chemtrail plane crashed. Often wondered what would happen if you took a sample from that. And this is Omega Air, another air company, private air company, Omega Air, it's Irish, who's um, been indicated that they've been spraying. And does that, does that look like fuel to you? And should it be carrying that much? I don't know. I mean, that's just the wrong colour, isn't it? I have no evidence. I have no samples. I tried to... T somebody's in California. I said, jump over the fence. Get a sample. Somebody said, I live near there. I said, jump over the fence and get a sample. Bring a vial with you. I don't care. I don't care if you get arrested. Just nail this story for good. But he didn't. Doesn't look right to me. And Omega Air has been um, indicated that they're doing it. Like Evergreen Air, which has emerged as a CIA front, Evergreen Air or Evergreen International. Uh, just gonna so Evergreen Air. And this is the banner that we we give out. We we hold up the banner and we give chemtrail information days and leaflets to people. We've done one in Portsmouth with Jane and Carl and Jane. It was a great day, about 30 people come out and we just, people wondering what the hell was going on and they learnt a lot. You know, give out leaflets like this, I see, I see some there. Brilliant. And um, we did one in Bournemouth, we did one in Southampton, we did one in Salisbury, we did, we did a big chemtrail rally in Cambridge, I'll get to that in a bit. But Evergreen Air, I, should, I don't have time now, I'm sorry, but it, it would uh, make up your mind if you were not sure that this was all real or not. Perhaps you think I've got an agenda or... You know, people are suspicious of you straight away. You know, what, what, what's your, what's in it for you? Why are you, why are you so interested in convincing people of this? It's a hoax, isn't it? Etc. La 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 la. I get it all day. Uh, it's a, a chemtrail activist called me a paid agent the other day, and that I was untrustworthy. And I'm on the dole, and because I wouldn't go on some charity thing for a month, they've now stopped my money for 26 weeks. You know, because I don't want to be a slave. So um, you get a lot of flack, you get a lot of comments and stuff, and I've had it for years. I've had gay, uh, paedophile, uh, cop, um, <laughs> gay, paedophile, cop, <laughs> and there are plenty of those. Um, so I've had it all, and just for the, just for the record, um, keep on attacking me, because I know I'm doing something right. Keep it going. So we hand out leaflets like that. That's Evergreen Air. Do look up Evergreen Air. That's their website I just showed you. And um, there's a connection with a huge John Wheeler. John Wheeler has um, 
a connection with Philip Leder, Leon Panetta, um, CIA and the House Deputy of Staff under Bill Clinton. The largest aluminium company in the world, UC Russell, R-U-S-A. Um, and this Philip Leder, <clears throat> this Philip Leder, the uh, CEO, was a senior advisor to Morgan Stanley International and a board member for the think tank, the Rand Corporation, etc. So he's also a trustee of the largest aluminium or aluminium company in the world. So with and very connected with the Evergreen Air. So um, do take a look at that. That's the chemtrail rally that we organised in Cambridge. We got about 30 people there. It was great. We got about 1,000 pieces of information or maybe 2,000 pieces of information out to people. It was Ministry of Defence land. It was um, an air show. There were lots of Spitfires flying around. Nice bit of irony. It was a good day out and we, we um, met a lot of really good, decent people and got a lot of information out. Here they are. We're not nutters. We're not... We're not conspiracy nuts. We're not mentally deranged or deficient. We care. We're decent people. These are decent people. There they are, blowing their trumpets, ringing their banners, and um, <laughs> if only. Yeah. If only. That's a fake photograph. That's the only fake photograph in here. Dees.com recommend it. If only. Because they've got to breathe it too. Manchester, Friday the 13th, 2012. The next Friday the 13th, take a look at the sky. They always absolutely batter nearly every country the same day. Is it a, some kind of satanic ritual? You know, a death ritual or something? Harp in Alaska. Unfortunately, I don't have time to, to go through all the harp stuff, but I'll give you one quote from Zbigniew Brzezinski. Political strategist, geo geopolitical strategist, one of the big players like Kissinger. They're still puppets, still muppets, but nonetheless a big player with a lot of power. A political strategists are tempted to exploit research on the brain and human behaviour. Geophysicist Gordon J. F. MacDonald and a specialist in problems of warfare says accurately timed Artificially excited electronic strokes could lead to a pattern of oscillations that produce relatively high power levels over certain regions of the Earth. In this way, one could develop a system that would seriously, imp uh, <laughs> seriously impair the brain performance of very large populations in ex selected regions over an extended period. Mind control from electromagnetic pulses something out of sci-fi, we're, we're here, folks. Everything you watched from Gene Roddenberry, uh, Gene Roddenberry in Star Trek is here. Mobile phones and more. We're in it. We're in the new world order now. We're under it. As early as 1970s, the big new Brzezinski presented a more controlled and directed society would, would gradually appear linked to, te to technology. This society would be dominated by an elite group which impresses voters. And, and I, that wasn't a quote, that was from uh, Dr. Nick Beggage. He quotes Brzezinski, big player, unhindered by the restraints of traditional liberal values, this elite would not hesitate to achieve its political ends by using the latest modern techniques for influencing public behavior and keeping society under close uh, surveillance and control. Technical and scientific momentum would then feed on the situation it exploits. And it goes on and on and on like that. Between Two Ages, I think, is, is this book. Check it out. If you want to know what they're, they're, they've done to you, what they're doing to you, and what they're going to do to you. Unless you stand up now. Bill Gates. Bill Gates, there he is. Ha, 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 ha. You spray you like bugs, I love it. Bill Gates backs, he backs climate scientists lobbying for large scale geoengineering. Yep, he's behind all the funding. And if you don't think it's a war on humanity, listen to this from Bill Gates. The world has, uh, he said this in public, it's on video, you can see it. Bill Gates, the self made man, yeah? 
the self-made front man. The world today has 6.8 billion people. That's heading up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really good job on new vaccines, reproductive health services, we could lower that, health care, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Bill Gates. That's a conservative estimate, isn't it? The UN won 80 percent of us gone. Yeah. A Ted Turner, the big media mogul. A world population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from, presence le uh, from present levels would be ideal. Uh, Jack Cousteau, uh, you, uh, UNESCO courier, first head of UNESCO was Julian Huxley, Aldo Huxley's brave new world brother. Jack Cousteau. In order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. It is a horrible thing to say, but it's just as bad not to say it. I actually find some of their humor quite comical sometimes. Absolutely mental. Mental cases need to be locked up now. Mikhail Gorbachev, the hero. My, he was my hero. I looked up to him. I looked up to the Dalai Lama, who's a Club of Rome. I cried the, the day Nelson Mandela came out, Club of Rome member. And here's another hero, a former hero of mine, along with Lech Valenza, Club of Rome. Mikhail Gorbachev, we must speak more clearly about sexuality, contraception, about abortion, about values that control population, because the ecological crisis, in short, is the population crisis. Cut the population, cut the population by 90%. And there aren't enough people left to do a great deal of ecological damage. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget that film, he's got that mark on his head and the guy goes, and it comes off, he goes, I knew it. You know, these guys are nuts, you know. They don't like being laughed at, by the way. They don't, psychopaths don't like being exposed and they don't like being laughed at. So please do both. Prince Philip. He came out of hospital recently alive. If I were reincarnated, if I were reincarnated, if I were reincarnated, I would wish to, to return to Earth as a killer virus to lower population levels. You know, it was the Indians in the factories as well. Ooh. It's just complete racist, eugenicist pig. David Brower, the first executive director of the Sierra Club, childbearing should be punishable crime against society <laughs> unless the parents hold a government license. All potential parents should be required to use contraceptive chemicals. Uh, Dave Foreman, of co-founder of Earth First. My three main goals would be to reduce population to about 100 million worldwide, destroy the industrial infrastructure, and see wilderness with its full complement of species returning throughout the world. Club of Rome, mankind at the turning point. The Earth has cancer and the cancer is man. And Rockefeller, David Rockefeller, we're on the verge of a global transformation. All we need is the right major crisis. Well, they got that with 9-11. And then Barack Obama as well. I mean, just, uh, they've all called for a new order, a new world order. Or a new world order, you know. Yeah. They're all on board. They're all on board. Why do you think they're all saying the same thing and they think the same? It's because that's how they got there. That's what they like around them. They can trust them not to be honest. You know, that's the way it works. Bertrand Russell, another elite member employed by MI5, MI6, a leading player in shaping our future, today's present. Scientific societies are as yet, are as yet in their infancy. It is to be expected that advances in physiology and psychology will give governments much more control over individual mentality than they, than they now have, even in totalitarian countries. Fitcher laid it down 
that education should aim at destroying free will, so that after pupils have left school, they shall be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking or acting otherwise than their schoolmasters would have wished. Diet, injections, that's the, the vaccines, folks, and in diet, injections, and injunctions will combine from an early age to produce the sort of character and the sort of beliefs that the authorities considered desirable. And any serious criticism of the powers that be will become psychologically impossible. Never. Never! That's all, you know, if it's depopulation, we might as well just make it sexy. If we're going to jump off the planet uh, for global warming and save the planet, uh, jump off the cliff to save the planet and be brainwashed and indoctrinated, what's coming next? Are we going to pick up the paper and it'll be, get your depops? You know, it would be like little M&M packets, little sweets with depops. I mean, what are they going to do, sex it up? Well, we've seen it on the telly for years. Lots of violence and death on the telly, uh, erotic violence. It's, it's here, we're in it. David Keith is one of the geoengineers. I'd like to introduce you to him. I think he's Mengele's uh, loinage. Um, sorry, I have to rush through. I have got some quotes from them. Alan Robock from Rutgers University. Ken Caldera. Ken Caldera. Um, intrinsically linked with the Carnegie Fo Illuminati Foundation, UNESCO, and he was on that Royal Society report, House of Commons Committee Royal Society report. He added to that, and the list goes on. Big player. He's the one that comes on the telly and, and, and debunks, try, tries to debunk all the chemtrailing um, news reports that come on. And he says, these aren't chemtrails. These aren't chemtrails, folks. What you're seeing is chemtrails, and... Uh, it's, they talk to you like a child, and you know. So he's, he's intrinsically linked with the pushing. He's at every conference, and uh, at one conference, this guy is running for the Senate. Uh, Lloyd, I think his name is. I forget his name now. I think it's Jeremy Lloyd. Jeremy um, John Fitzgerald. Sorry, spraying San Francisco, exposing the GA engineers. Here's Ken Caldera. Here's Ken Caldera here, and he's. That's not a chemtrail, that's the light. Um, he's explaining to him, and he's just laughing at him. He, he has genuine concerns about being poisoned. And he's saying, you know, what? it's happening. Why aren't you saying that it's happening? You, why aren't you saying you're doing it? Why, why, are these, why is this spraying going on? Why are you pushing this research and these ideas, geoengineering, when it's, it's having a devastating, people are dying, la, 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 la. And he said, and he said well, and he said, no, no, I don't trust what you're saying. And he walked off, just walked off and said, well, I'm not going to trust anybody. That, I'm not going to talk to anybody that doesn't trust me. You know. Yeah, we're, we're, contri uh, we're contributing to the science of mass murder. And um, I'm, I'm offended that you don't trust me. Bye. You know. So there's no point in talking to them. They're just mind-controlled ninnies. Low-level ninnies at that. There's another asterisk over Procter & Gamble in, in Bournemouth, I thought a nice bit of irony there. Um, chemtrainment. BBC chemtrainment, getting used to the idea that it's all quite normal. Um, Neil Oliver, he'll show you sheep in the history of Scotland, big chemtrail sky. You know, personally, if I was filming, I'd say to the lads, hey, it's a bit, um, that's a bit webbed up there today, isn't it? Hey, that's a bit weird. Has anybody noticed that? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Cross, cross, looking up, sky, skull and crossbones. This lasted for about two seconds. Quick flash of skull and crossbones symbolism. Uh, this lasted for about a second. It was a serpentine kind of flash, just that. And every character that, uh, this is Cal Gacus apparently, Fought the Romans. Every Scottish character in the, the, the story that he's telling you in the, in the documentary is shown first when he's introduced with an eye. So you've got predatory symbolism, um, skull and bones, uh, 
one eye, all seeing eye, lots of emphasis. Oh, that's all quite normal as, as well. See the chemtrail up there, it's quite normal. And um, I made a video of that. Oh, that's me actually. I put my head on top of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, here's your typical email response you might get from New Zealand. Uh, thank you for your email, uh, New Zealand. Thank you for your email to Green Party MP Julie Ann uh, Genter. It was passed on to our office as Catherine Delahunty is the Green Party spokesman for, to for toxic issues. Toxic issues. While we appreciate your concern, the Green Party does not currently believe that the scientific evidence in favour of the existence of chemtrails holds up to scrutiny. We have limited resources and therefore must place our focus on areas where the scientific evidence in favour of toxicity and potential or real harm is of the highest level. Is that a joke? The highest level? I mean, how more toxic can you get? I can't think of another way you can, apart from jumping on um, uh, under a bus or something, you know. Um, some politicians have spoken out. Pernilla Hagberg in, in Sweden. And um, she's continuing her cause. And I, I interviewed her and, and hoped it would go further. And it has. And we'll just have to see how it goes. There's about 10 um, MPs in Europe that have got nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Stone walled. Former FBI chief. Ted Gunderson says chemtrails, death dumps must be stopped. He's deceased now, died of cancer, but there it is from the horse's mouth. Former FBI, stop it. So it's very real. I want my blue sky back. Help us to get it back and spread the word. I'm Patrick Lynch of the Free Truth Show. Thank you.